The following interview was conducted with Robert Irwin and James McBryant for the Purdue University Oral History Project. It took place on November 4th, 2017 at Boilermaker Station in Purdue Memorial Union. The interviewer is Adriana Harmeyer. Uh, so to get us started, could you each tell me when you attended Purdue and what you've studied? Um, I started in 1975 and I did two years in electrical engineering and then I transferred to the BSIM program at uh, Cranert and that's where I got my degree from Cranert. And then after 35 years I went back in the classroom in 2014 and um, did a two-year executive MBA with the international MBA program and we went to five countries around the world, one being Purdue, of course, China, um, Brazil, the Netherlands, and Hungary, and Turkey, too. Wow. You know, I was um, kind of a latecomer to Purdue myself, uh, interested in getting an executive MBA and shopped around a little bit and uh, had some background in international work and liked what I saw with the Global Executive MBA through Cranert and enrolled as well in 2014, graduated December 2015. Uh, excellent program, great camaraderie with the cohort, uh, excellent mix of international students, international professors. Um, highly recommend the program to anyone who's interested in an executive MBA, especially with a global focus. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. So with that international program, how much time did you actually spend at Purdue? There was a uh, three or four days for the program launch, and then there was a two weeks residency at Purdue in the summer of 2015. Mm -hmm. And while we spent just a short time on the campus at Purdue, the entire program was branded with Purdue, you know, throughout. Mm -hmm. uh, Purdue, um, you know, the, the whole process just, you know, was black and gold. <laughs> and uh, one thing that was great too is that you know the alumni association claimed us right right off the bat. I mean, mm -hmm. They made it known that we were going to be Purdue grads and we would be part of the Boilermaker Nation, and you know that was just excellent uh, buy-in mm -hmm. on the part of the alumni association. And uh, you know we we sensed the same thing even from our international students that had undergrads from other. Na national uh, universities in Europe or wherever it was and uh, for just as an example we have a couple students from Hungary and uh, throughout the process you know we stayed in communication through social media and one time we got a picture she was shopping at a store in Hungary and there was a Purdue shirt on display at the <laughs> shopping center in Hungary and she shot us a picture she's like look what I found so, <laughs> so Purdue is definitely international in, in a lot of ways mm -hmm. we did five different residencies and all the international residencies the four outside of Purdue the professors came there some of them were local professors they could be from Hungary or the Netherlands but a lot of times the professors were coming from Purdue so you know although we weren't on campus we had professors uh, teaching us mm -hmm. so it was really a lot of fun and an amusing anecdote, I guess you'd say, about the Cranard focus was uh, the em the executive MBA staff referred to Purdue as the mothership, <laughs> and they would communicate with us, say, you know, here at the mothership, or welcome to the mothership, will we come for the Purdue uh, in Purdue on campus mm -hmm. portion of the program. So mm -hmm. it was definitely very focused around Purdue. Mm -hmm. So, Robert, having been here years earlier as a Purdue student, what differences did you see between your two Purdue experiences? There was so much development done on the campus, so many new buildings, a lot of great new facilities. Um, and I think that's the main thing I saw is how, because I think when I was here, there was like 25,000 students, and now you've got like maybe 45,000. And so there's a lot more infrastructure, and they've modernized a lot of buildings, but they've kept some of the great historic ones, which is nice too. Mm -hmm. So they haven't done away with the past, but they've expanded for the future in a nice way. Mm -hmm. So, um, Do you have any favorite parts of campus? Or did you have favorite parts when you were here in the 70s? Any places you like to spend your time? I, I like the Union. That was a great place to come, you know, have some coffee and do some studying. Um, I went to the Cranet Library quite a bit when I was an undergrad. Um, you know, unfortunately, 
I didn't quite experience the co-rec as, as I should have when I was younger, but now I've been experiencing it more, and it's really nice. Mm-hmm. Um, my uh, my son's a, a sophomore here, so when I graduated, I didn't think I'd be coming back, but here I'm coming back now for the next three or four years. So, mm-hmm. so it's nice to see. So there's a new uh, engineering library, which is awesome. Um, but, Do you have any specific memories from when you were first coming to Purdue? Do you remember, you know, the first time you were on campus? You know, back in the 70s it was different, but, you know, I I didn't visit any campus. Um, I arrived the day when I was moving into the dorm, and so my first dorm was um, Wiley Hall, and so arriving, you know, I, you know, I didn't know what to expect. I just, you know, now there's, you go on all these trips with your kids, look at all these schools, but back then, you know, it wasn't so common. Mm-hmm. And so it was just kind of like, wow, you know. Um, but, you know, obviously a lot of impressions of red bricks are everywhere, right? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Do you remember what led you to choose Purdue at that point? Well, my father's an <laughs> alumni as well, uh-huh. and he graduated in 1948. And... I, and again, unlike today, I only applied to two schools, University of Illinois and Purdue. And, um, and I told my father, you know, in-state would be cheaper for University of Illinois, but I'd rather go to Purdue. And he said, go to Purdue. Mm-hmm. Um, but those are the only two places I applied. Now you've got to have all these safety schools and everything else. But I never thought of a safety school. It was just like, I know where I'm going, and it's going to be one of these two places. Mm-hmm. Um, probably was still too confident at the time, but it worked out. So you both spoke a little bit about the strength of the program that brought you back for the international program. What was it about Purdue's program that stood out to you? Any specific thing that that led you to to choose this again? Uh, First of all, the reputation of Purdue. Mm -hmm. Uh, my undergrad is not in a STEM-focused uh, category, area of education, but uh, I felt like that, you know, if I could get into the exec ed program through Purdue with the STEM focus of, you know, the brand, Purdue mm-hmm. brand, then uh, that would not only strengthen my background, but also that uh, on a resume would certainly carry some weight if it came to a position of looking at a place you know, that had that engineering or math focus. Mm-hmm. Um, that coupled with the international focus on the global EMBA program was what really brought me to Purdue. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, when I was, I, was, I was on the fence as to whether to do a program or not, and I was looking at the, the um, EMBA program here, and when I was talking to, um, I said, Donna, not Donna, um, anyhow, she says, you'd be a perfect match for the international program, which I didn't even know existed. Because in my resume, my background, I've traveled a lot. I've lived in two different countries, Brazil and China. And I thought, wow, that's a lot of international exposure. Mm-hmm. And I thought that would be of interest. To me. That would keep the program interested in me. Because I was like the senior member of the class. I knew I needed something to really keep me motivated. And so the travel part of it was a fun because... You know, you would descend on a city for two weeks and you'd be working really hard during the day. And sometimes you'd have to be working on projects at night, but then you'd have time to do things with your classmates. And so we saw a lot, you know, with these countries. So um, the the dean, um, David Scorman, has made a focus that this will be the most international of all executive MBA programs. And the Economist magazine ranked as number one for the most international. Because a lot of these MBA programs that have an international flavor, they'll do one residency, maybe two. But we did four outside of the country. And so that international focus was, to me, something that I thought would be really interesting and make the program fun. Because mm-hmm. it's a lot of work and you got to have some fun. Absolutely. <laughs> what advice would you give to someone else who is interested in, in this kind of program? Would you, what would you tell them about the Purdue program to try to steer them or give them some information as they're making a decision? It's an opportunity of a lifetime. And if you've never been out of the country very much, it's even a better opportunity because you're going to be going there with a group and seeing these great countries 
and learning from professors from around the world. And you're going to have students that are from around the world. We had students from Peru and China, Hungary. What am I going to say? Let's see, we had South Africa. South Africa. Uh, just um, all around the world. <laughs> but it was a great mix. And, um, and because of the way the program was set up, that you would descend on these cities for two weeks, the bonds that you created, you know, I think some of them will be with me for the rest of my life. And so it was a really cool experience. And the classes were great. The teachers were great. Um, and it's a very different MBA program, but it has so many benefits. Mm -hmm. I would tell a person, don't wait. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> um, it, it's a decision that uh, the value added is going to be so exponentially higher if you get in early mm -hmm. and you know don't don't hesitate don't put off if you're thinking about an executive MBA you're looking especially at um, an international MBA then Purdue is where you need to come mm -hmm. and don't put it off uh, do it and you'll you won't regret it I agree with that advice but sometimes I speak to older people who are thinking about doing this and I say, it's never too late you never want to stop learning. Right. Mm -hmm. So just because, you know, you know, it doesn't give you all the career benefits that whatever you did it in the 30s or 40s, you will gain from this. And that's one of the things that I, I was actually pleasantly surprised, how much I've used the program after I left. Because I kind of went into it thinking I'm doing this more for myself, but it's really helped on things that I'm doing on my job. Mm -hmm. And so you're never too old to learn. Younger is better. But there's something about learning when you're older because you've got all the experience behind you. It's more meaningful. I mean, because I remember taking economics as an undergrad and as a grad, and it was like, now I understand what it's all about. Mm -hmm. You know, you're studying, but it wasn't, you know, it was more theoretical. It was textbook. Mm -hmm. But if you've been in the business world for 35 years, all of a sudden it's like, wow, <laughs> this, this is different. Adding on to what Bob just said, the beauty of the executive MBA is your laboratory is a business. Mm -hmm. It's not a lab on campus somewhere where you're just working with theory and trying to implement that. You are actually living what you're learning. And you're, you know, between your, your residencies, 11, 12 weeks, you're on your job, you're communicating with your fellow cohort members who are on their job, and all that input is, you know, training information. It's just... It's a, it's a gold mine. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, if we step back from that particular program and think about Purdue as a whole, is there anything you wish people knew about Purdue that maybe isn't as widely known as it could be? Well, the one thing that still amazes me is people still think of it as a private school, mm -hmm. and it's not. Um, but I think, you know, the reputation it has is pretty strong, um, but I'm not sure if I can think of anything that's missing. Yeah, I mean, Purdue does a great job of marketing and branding. Um, you know, I, I've traveled around the U.S. and again internationally, and almost without fail, you see somewhere somebody with a T-shirt on or a cap or, or somewhere in a store. There's something that you know you'll see the the P or the Boilermaker or something, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so what do I wish people knew about Purdue? Uh, if they don't know already, they should know that it's a great value, yeah. a great value. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Do you have any, any last thoughts, memories, comments you'd like to share with me? Let's win a football game. <laughs> yeah, enjoy the game. <laughs> I, I guess just my last, my, my last thing is, it's become so much more meaningful for me now when I come back to campus to visit my son. My father was here. He was in ROTC. You know, I did two degrees here. My son's here. And it's just such a great experience to come back to campus. And I didn't think I'd be coming back so frequently, but, you know, I'm getting back here more than I expected, so it's great to be back, and it's it's really kind of a great thing for me, considering all the ties between my father and my son and myself. 
Mm-hmm. And I, I live in central Indiana. I'm just like an hour from the Purdue campus. And I one thing I really appreciate Purdue, about Purdue is what a great neighbor they are. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, involved in the community, uh, you know, looking for opportunities to not only provide a good education opportunity on campus, but around the surrounding area as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, down in Indianapolis with New Charter School. I mean, just a fabulous, fabulous opportunity for kids to, to get started early. Mm-hmm. And it's done a little into Purdue. So nice. It's a great, Purdue's a good neighbor. Mm-hmm. <laughs> great. I'm in New Jersey, so it's hard for me to get here. <laughs> but I'm still getting here. <laughs>